There we go. Hi, I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome to episode five of our replay of the classic war game Africa Corps from Avalon Hill. If you've seen the previous episodes, you know the situation's gone from bad to worse for the Axis forces. And in episode four, Rommel managed to annihilate all his reinforcements, which were basically their last hope. As we come into episode five, it's fair to say that the situation is pretty hopeless. And Erwin Rommel has botched his campaign in North Africa. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I'm kind of filming a video. There's an urgent letter for you. Urgent letter for me? Whoa, this is interesting. Check this out. So this is a letter postmarked from the 1940s and gosh, it looks like it's from Erwin Rommel. Let's, uh, let's open it up. Let's, see what, let's, let's just read this and see what it says. This is interesting. Herr Blitz, you Dumkoff. You said in your last video that I, Erwin Rommel, have done horribly in this campaign, but it's not my fault. You are the idiot who has led my beloved Africa Corps to catastrophe. Outside Tobruk, you didn't advance when you should have, then advanced when you shouldn't have, and you can't even get the rules right. Uh, your event cards, with their severe sandstorm, basically halted our advance in its tracks. Now you've trapped our Africa Corps near Aguila and destroyed our reinforcements in two weeks. Thanks to your incompetence, the situation is hopeless. I've taken matters into my own hands and am ordering the surrender of our forces in North Africa. We are heavily outnumbered and any further actions in the theater will simply result in a futile and tragic loss of brave German and Italian soldiers. This game is over. We surrender. Go find another game to play. I suggest checkers or tic-tac-toe if you can figure the rules out. Um, yeah, he doesn't sound very happy there, but uh, apparently, yeah, this, the situation has changed dramatically with this. It sounds like Rommel has surrendered the scene, and so let's just take a look at the situation, and maybe, um, you know, if that's the case, let's just do kind of a post-mortem and an analysis on, on how things have, uh, have played out in this game, and uh, yeah, that's surprising. He, uh, he does sound pretty mad there, doesn't he? Just a quick reminder before we dig in that the Axis are bottled up in the southwest corner of the map. For them to win the game, they'd have to break out from their current position and basically sweep the entire map. As we zoom in and take a closer look, we can just see how uh, kind of hopeless the Axis situation is. They've got four remaining units here with a horde of uh, weaker allied units to the east, but then more reinforcements streaming down from the north. And let's take a little closer look at this situation down in the south. If we look real close on the south here, we can see uh, just exactly how dire it is. And one of the things that uh, Jeff Berkman pointed out in one of the comments was that this row of hexes here of the game is actually out of play. It's not officially, uh, they're not official hexes in the game. So in order to fix that, we would move these units out of there. And that would really make this a two hex front. And so going back and forth until the allies kind of beat down the Axis units and then push on and take Tripoli and things. It could take quite a while because there just isn't much leverage for them to get on these forces, but it's clear that the Axis forces, they're not going anywhere. So I think all things considered, it, it really is time to call this a victory for the Allies and accept uh, Rommel's surrender here. So with that in mind, let's take a, a kind of brief talk a little bit and talk a little bit about what uh, happened and what kind of some positives and negatives were with the scenario. So if we talk a little bit about, I mean, how did the Axis lose this one? I think there are a number of factors that played a role. The first was they got extremely unlucky in their supply rolls. Their first three supply rolls were all sunk, which really didn't help because that left them for a good part of the initial part of the game with just one supply unit on the board. And uh, they really couldn't use that to go forward because it would have left them out of supply and potentially losing the whole game. Then the event cards, which we'll talk about in a moment too, there was that severe sandstorm that hit them early in that first episode that basically cost them a turn. And I think in this game, the Axis forces are on such a tight timeline, they have to get to Tobruk almost before those first allied reinforcements come in. And then once they were behind the eight ball in terms of time, because they lost supply units and because of that sandstorm, felt a lot of pressure to put an attack on Tobruk and really kind of mangled the attack on Tobruk. I mean, Rommel in his letter mentions not advancing when we should have and advancing when we shouldn't have. And there were a couple of clear mistakes, I think, that were made in there. 
Then the Allies had a pretty good counterattack that actually kind of really made the situation tricky for the Axis forces. We had a couple of rural misinterpretations that probably washed out even, but all of it summed up just really led to an attack on Tobruk that just never worked. And then suddenly the Axis forces went from putting an assault on Tobruk to being essentially out of units. I mean, they were pretty much wiped out and had to retreat back until Aguila, which at what point the scenario was over. So I thought one thing I'd also want to like to take a look up now is um, the event cards, which are kind of a mod that I created for this game. I have some thoughts on those. I, I know a bunch of people have mentioned them in comments, and so I wanted to offer some thoughts up on those as we wrap up the scenario too. So let's talk a little bit about the event cards. Um, one of my goals with this, kind of getting back into wargaming and to kind of dig back into the hobby a little bit, was to kind of to build up some design skills. I mean, I have some ideas or some things, maybe, you know, a little while down the line, getting good enough to maybe make some prototype games and things like that. So I wanted to kind of get my hands dirty, if you would, a little bit by creating something that would be able to impact into the game. And one of the things I noticed with Africa Core is if you look on, for example, Board Game Geek and a lot of the forums there, you'll see a lot of people saying like, here's my opening move. And then people will come in and comment and say, well, you really should move this unit, you know, two squares to the east and this unit should be there. And so the game is so set in its ways because there's so few pieces and people have played it so often that there's, you know, it's almost like a chess opening. There's gambits and different types of names for different opening moves and things like that. So it's it's a very determined pathway, I think, through the initial portion, at least, of the game. And I want to try to shake that up a little bit with a little bit of unpredictability. So I created a series, again, of 24 event cards to kind of modify some of the parameters and make a little bit more... Uh, Different kind of variety for the start of the game. There's a couple of... The, the, the event cards basically center on two different types of events. One is events that impact supply, and the other are events that impact weather. And those are basically the two categories they, they, they sit in. And the ones for supply, I was, I was really careful to make sure that it didn't increase or decrease total supply in the game. It just created a little bit of variability there. For the most part, I'm happy with how those play out because I could see them actually saving the Axis forces from some very bad luck die rolls with their supply in many situations. So I think that's good. It could hurt them as well too, but I'm, I'm kind of happy with the variability of that. What I didn't get right though is the, the impact of the weather event cards on the game. Most of the weather event cards that I created were negative weather impacts. So like this one here, even Mediterranean storms and things like that, sandstorms that we can see over here. And so in these basically slow down. They either make it harder to attack or they make units slower. And that that severe sandstorm that hit the Axis forces in turn three, I think it was, was really a crippler because basically it's like the turn stops and they lost another turn and they're on such a tight time schedule in the beginning of the game that I feel like the weather cards, with it being mostly inclement and negative weather effects, really hurt the Axis forces in this game. So I think what I'm going to try to do is to go in and neutralize these weather events to have some, to make the negative weather impact ones a little bit less and then to add some positive impact ones. I have one in here now which gosh I'm not sure. Oh actually there it is. That's fortunate. Cooler temperatures where it actually speeds up units. So I was thinking to do a few that would actually accelerate attack and movement just a little bit, but to tweak those a little bit. So I think I'm going to go back through, make another version of these, and then upload them to Board Game Geek as version 2 of these event cards. And again, I realize they're not for everybody. If you want that set path, and if you're looking for something that's absolutely historically accurate, you know, these, are, these aren't really that thing. This is designed a little bit to increase some variability in the game. It might also be a good balancing factor, for, factor, for example, if someone, um, a better player, is playing the the... Axis forces and you need something to balance the game out a little bit. But um, if anyone does get a chance to play with them and stuff like that, I'd be curious to hear comments and I'm up open, of course, to kind of tweaking them as things goes on too. So with all that being said, I think that brings us to the end of this first playthrough. And uh, I thought maybe I'd just offer some final thoughts as we wrap things up. And sorry we didn't play through to the end. I think, you know, Jeff mentioned, I think, in his comment where he pointed, pointed out the unplayable hexes that the game probably isn't really even be designed to play where we were playing the last couple turns with the Axis forces bottled up in the, the southwest corner of the map. And, you know, we could have finished it out, but it, on a two-hex front, it was almost going to be like a World War I slogfest with units going back and forth. 
and really to no point, it was, it was over. You know, the Axis forces had basically, they, they've lost at this point. So I think it makes sense to accept uh, Rommel, Rommel's surrender, thinking that, you know, anything forward we did really probably wasn't going to be that interesting and it wasn't going to change the outcome to that regard. But some other thoughts in terms of the whole uh, episode. This was really fun to make. It was, again, my first playthrough to try to do this, and I've been away from the hobby for, for a couple decades, so it was really fun to dig back in. I think we had five mistakes, rule mistakes in total, and thanks to people that pointed those out. Thanks as well for pointing out some of the other things. I know Matthew Perry in his recent comment pointed out some of the name designations for the allied units. I wasn't kind of paying attention to those. So all those things I think are going to help me to get better. And I'm sure that there'll be mistakes and errors going forward, but I'm hopeful that as I, as we do go forward, we'll be able to have a little bit more of a smoother experience. And it's funny too, because at this one here, I thought I'd pick a simple game that I could maybe get through it mistake-free, but it's an art, I think, to kind of, when you execute a war game, to be able to have a, even a simple, relatively simple set of rules to hold those head in your head and then play out the game, especially if you haven't played for a while. So thank you again for your patience in that regard, and I hope to do better as we go forward. Uh, but this, again, was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I, it was fun to make, fun to play, and I'm looking forward to doing more. I think next up, we're either going to do Storm Above the Reich, or I'm thinking Sherman Leader would be a fun one. Those are both two solid tier games, which would create a little bit more of a, a kind of a viable opponent, perhaps, rather than playing both sides of a campaign like this one. But I, I'm really hopeful that I'll be able to do a bunch of different games, older games, new games, uh, single player, two player variety, probably get some games in against other people as well at some point too. So thanks again for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this, please, uh, Leave a comment that's always fun to read, and I appreciate the feedback. And thanks again for the thumbs up and the likes. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Definitely want to make this a regular part of the channel going forward. I mean, I think the general theme of the channel is thinking games and strategy games, and I think this fits in really nicely. And it's been so much fun to step away from a screen and to get into a board where you're touching pieces with your fingers and, and a die roller is, I think, a, a very... Uh, an elegant charm to this that's really fun to dig into. So thanks as well for uh, tuning in again, and we'll see you all in our next adventure. The next series should start in a couple of days. Take Hi. three. Hi, I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome to our episode. Hi, I'm... Welcome to episode five of Africa Core. In the last few episodes, you've seen that the Axis forces have gone from bad to worse. They're now trapped in the southwest corner of the map, and it doesn't look like there's any way out. It's fair to say that Urban Rommel has completely botched this. There's a letter for you. I'm kind of filming a video. It's urgent. I get it. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. I'm gonna laugh. No, you got it. Okay, I got it.